As you might know, um, in this space, I try to share a little bit of knowledge from time to time. And I learn along as well. But um, come on, uh, there's so many jargons in this industry that I cannot deal. For example, do you have any idea of the difference between fungible and non-fungible tokens? Okay, so relax. This one is a little bit easier to get than the other ones. Um, but before I take a shot at explaining anything to you, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and activate the bell icon so you don't miss future videos from us. So at first, the Pillar Wallet will hold Ethereum, ETH, and tokens, primarily ERC20 tokens. Now this um, number slash letters is simply like a tokens standard, which defines the tokens as indistinct, uh, indistinct, indistinguishable from one another, making them fungible, which means like you cannot really tell one from the other. You can think of ERC20 tokens as like grains of salt, uh, as they look the same. If you put them in one bag, that's salt and that's it. And as you know, salt was actually used as currency in the past. So it's even easier to understand what ERC20 tokens are. This means that the ERC20 tokens can be used as a way of exchange within a system. As an example, you use pillar tokens, which are ERC20, to pay for goods and services on the pillar platform. And they will also be used to cover transaction fees. But there are unique tokens that the wallet will also be able to hold. They can even look very, very similar, but they will have different IDs or metadata that will differentiate one from the other. These are non-fungible. And a good way to think of them is to compare them as like limited edition baseball cards or like limited edition watches, limited edition cars, which can look the same, but they are not. This standard is called the ERC721. This is the one used for CryptoKitties, for example, where every kitty is unique and different from the other. There are other standards, of course, with other functionalities, but understanding these two will give you a solid base for getting what tokens can do for us. In short, every type of token have their purposes and use cases. This simply illustrates the potential of the technology that we are diving into. With these different tokens, the developers in blockchain can create a multitude of products that can benefit everyone. Like all the potential use cases we've discussed in this other video, right somewhere. But let me know if you want me to talk about any specific standard and its functionalities and applications in the comments below. I do enjoy learning about it. it gives me a glimpse of what the future can shape up to be. But that's it for now. Please like this video if you like it. And as always, thank you for watching. See you next time.